Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. It's been a very tough couple days for me. Um, I mentioned in some of the other videos I'm learning how to garden. I've got chickens now. Um, I'm learning how to fish. I'm learning how to hunt. Uh, I got a bear at the early part of the season and then um, of the year. And uh, gosh, it's hard. And then I tried to spend the last two days deer hunting. So one trip, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, uh, yeah, yesterday and the day before. day before, we did a lot of driving around and uh, going back, back the old logging roads. I think we did, we, we did 91 miles around trip, going through the old logging roads and looking off into the areas where you can hunt for deer. And then yesterday, we went up someplace and we had to hike. I had the big backpack on for carrying the meat out. So if we got a deer, it'd be about 100, 120 pounds worth of meat to be packed out. And uh, we were hiking all over. Uh, I think we did 10 to 15 miles round trip. And this is like mountain country, uphill, downhill, uphill, downhill. And uh, it rained on us a couple times. And it's, it's tough work. And I'm not the young man. I wish I learned this stuff when I was younger and not when I was older. But, uh, you know, by the time I was done, I kind of feel, feel a little bit older than you really are <laughs> when you get done doing stuff like that. But the Lord put it back to, to what's more important, the word of the Lord. The um, Lord put it on my heart when it comes to... Uh, I, did, I, I went ahead and linked the Bible study that Brother Brian did at King James Video Ministries, Let Them Alone, but I just felt like I needed to do another reminder because I see it going on in the comment section. I see some of the brethren failing the Lord and falling for some of the stuff we're going to be talking about and making videos. And like I said, when you do a video, when a brother and sister in Christ does something, or a brother and sister in Christ, or a brother and sister in Christ, try to talk to them. But when you have the lost world do something, and you're trying to refute them or call them out as false and everything, turn it into a Bible study. The number one thing I always point out to the brothers and sisters of Christ is remember who you're talking to. That's the number one thing, brothers and sisters of Christ. Remember who you're talking to. Are you talking when you find out you're talking to someone who's lost? Do you continue talking to them about the Word of God and fall into the trap of debating and some of the stuff that we we're going to be talking about? Or do you realize, okay, he's lost. I'm just going to pre the, preach the gospel to him and move on. You realize they're lost. You preach the gospel to them and you move on. You don't sit there. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Turn to Matthew 15, 14. Right. we got a lot of clear skies right now. The Lord's blessed me with getting out here real quick because I wanted to do a video outside because I do a lot of videos inside behind the desk. I want to do a Bible study out here. It's so beautiful in these last few days. But we've had a lot of clouds this morning. It's been sprinkling off and on. And we got a huge section of clear sky coming through. And clouds can start coming through at any moment. So we're going to hit this hard and fast. Matthew 15, 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into a ditch. Now we read that all the time, saying, telling people, Brother Sister Christ telling you, let them alone, let them alone. Why? There's two main reasons I want to talk about today that why I always push this to the Brother Sister Christ. Once I've linked the gospel message, these guys, they keep trying to hit me on the comment sections, trying to poke me with the stick. Come on, come back, come fight. Come uh, backbiting, whisperings, debating, arguing. Come on, come on, come on. And I ignore them. Why? I let them alone. There's two things, reasons why you let them alone. And what does let them alone really mean? Okay. No more reason to let them alone. Exodus 32.10. Go ahead and turn to Exodus 32.10. Now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. This is God speaking. Okay? You say, wait a minute, it's saying let God alone. Exactly. You let them alone by giving them to God, and then you let God alone. God will deal with it. How are you not letting God alone? Are you still making videos left and right? Are you still making comments left and right? Uh, getting into the backbiting? the uh, whispering, the debates and everything, well, you're not letting God alone. You're not letting them alone, and you're not letting God alone. If you let them alone, that means you're giving them to God to deal with. Say, Lord, 
I give them to you. Then you let God alone. Let God deal with it. Okay. Um, why is that so important? Turn to Proverbs 24, 15. You got to give it to God. You give them to God and say, Lord, I give them to you. Let you deal with them. I've tried preaching truth to them. The true plan of salvation. I started talking with them and realized, hey, they're lost. They're not going to get it. I was trying to talk to one guy for a while and come to find out he's not dispensational. And he keeps going to the Old Testament and running to the Old Testament and trying to apply doctrine from the Old Testament to today for a Christian today. And he's really messed up. And once I realized he wasn't dispensational, I started talking to him about a couple of things. I just got to the point where I just had to preach the gospel to him. I linked him. This I didn't just throw him to the curb. I linked dispensational teachings to him. And then I linked the gospel message because I, he, would, he refused to go watch the dispensational teachings. I mean, I don't need to watch that stuff. Well, then here's the gospel message. I'm giving you to God. That's what you do with the lost world. You preach the, the plan, true plan of salvation, and then you give them to God and let God deal with them. But Proverbs 24, 15, Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwellings of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Here's, here's why you give it to God and you let God alone. Mischief. 17. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. I've been seeing that a lot lately. People make, making mocking comments, sarcastic comments. And I'll be doing another video eventually about sarcasm in the sense that people keep saying Jesus was sarcastic, Jesus was sarcastic, chapter and verse. And they try to bring up chapter and verse and it's like, he's not being sarcastic. Jesus was never sarcastic. Jesus never mocked in his earthly ministry. Okay, I put out that challenge in one of my other studies when it came to mocking. I said, prove to me, show me in scripture. And I tried to remind the brethren, words have meaning. Some people don't understand. They hear people say, well, Jesus was sarcastic. So then they just parrot what someone else said. They don't take the time to look into what is the word sarcastic or sarcasm? What does that really mean? And is Jesus really being that and doing that? Mocking, what does that really mean? Is Jesus really doing that? He's not. Okay. Give me a second, there's a plane going by. <laughs> but the two reasons why, one of the reasons why you give, uh, let, when you let them alone, is you give them to God and you let God alone. It says here, Rejoice not when thy enemy falleth, and let not thy thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Lest the Lord see it and it displease him and he turn away his wrath from him. You're not letting the Lord alone. Oh. You see these people will keep bringing it up and just, oh this person here, that person there. You make a Bible study, you make a video, you're done. You try preaching truth to somebody and the moment they don't want the truth, you preach the plan of salvation. That's the ultimate truth to pre uh, preach to them just to make sure you at least did that part and you're done with them. But if you keep getting into the fights, the bickering, the backbiting and everything, God sees that. And he's like, you're not letting me alone so I can deal with them. You're trying to deal with them still. You're not letting God alone to deal with those people. You're still trying to deal with them. Mm -hmm. But the big thing for that verse there is that you, I see people, I'm seeing the brethren, they're mocking, they're being sarcastic as they say, but they're, they're, they're basically backbiting. They're putting people down, making fun of their physical features, their, their uh, health and stuff like that. And it's like, you're not supposed to be doing that. Mm -hmm. And then when they see an enemy that just totally falls flat on their face, uh, if you're going to make a video about it, make a video about it, but do a Bible study about it. But if you're just making a video to point out, ha, 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 that's what the enemy does. That's not what a Bible-believing, God-fearing uh, man does Okay, in ministry. Okay. That's not what brethren do, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay, we don't, We're not supposed to do that. We're to pray for them. Lord, I hope that if that falling was important and he had to stumble and fall, I pray that helps bring him to his knees so he'll come to you broken and get saved. I always pray that the, God gives them every opportunity to get saved. But the number one reason to let them alone is because if you don't let them alone, God is not going to deal with them. It's that simple. 
Okay? Because if you're not letting them alone, you're not letting God alone to deal with it. I hope that makes sense, brothers and sisters of Christ, and you can understand what I'm saying. If you're still trying to fix it, or you're still trying to jab in there, and you're still trying to fight, fight, fight for the Lord, which sometimes it's good, but oftentimes, like I said, it gets to the point where you give it to God and He'll take over. He'll take care of it. I said this in another study, I'll say it again. I used to work at Fred Meyer's when I was 18 as a cart boy. I collected all the carts, I stocked the shelves, I would take... Uh, People would take items and change their minds last minute whether they wanted it or not, and we'd have a big cart full of stuff that had to go throughout the store that you had to go put it away. Okay, I had to clean the bathrooms. And, but the thing is, is when I got to work there, they taught me customer service. But the one of the things they taught me in customer service is, is when, when you get a customer that's being out of control, that's being difficult, you hand them over to the manager. You don't sit there and continue to fight with them in front of everybody and try to deal with them in front of everybody. You say, excuse me, let me get my manager. And the manager deals with them. That's what we were taught. Okay? Mainly because, I always say it's mainly because he gets paid the big bucks. I was getting paid you know, minimum wage back then. Gosh, I'm getting old. 22, 23 years ago. Uh, some people say, ah, it's not that old. But... Um, but that's the whole point. You give them to the manager, and the manager deals with it. And when the manager comes by, you don't go up there and still keep trying to deal with that customer while the manager is trying to deal with the customer. No, you say, here's the manager. You pass them off to the manager, and you go about doing the work. I go back to collecting some cards. I go back to stocking shelves. It's the same thing for a Christian. When you come across somebody that's being so difficult, a false convert, or even someone who just flat out rejects Jesus Christ, and they're being difficult, give them to the Lord. And when you give them to the Lord, you turn around and you go back to doing the work of the Lord. Okay, back to your Bible reading, memorization, Bible studies, preaching the plan of salvation over here, fellowship with the brethren. You go back to doing the work of the Lord and living a life of Christ, and you let God deal with that person. But if you're still in that person's face, God can't deal with that person. He won't. That's what we just read about there. Okay. Mainly if you're, it says be glad, when you're being glad and you just mock, you become like the lost world and start throwing it in their face, backbiting, whisperings and mocking and stuff like that. God's not going to deal with that person. Okay, he's going to turn away his wrath. That's the number one reason why you let them alone, brothers and sisters of Christ. The number two reason, we've already talked about this a little bit, but uh, to let them alone is the backbiting the whispering, the debating, etc. We're going to read some verses. But they try to pull you into doing what they're doing. So it can hurt your testimony and it'll hurt your ability to do the work of the Lord. Distract you from doing the work of the Lord. It can actually affect you doing the work of the Lord. Okay? I've seen it. Some men are starting to get into where they're, they're falling in, in when they try to do Bible studies and videos and stuff like that, you start seeing them getting into the backbiting and the whispering and the debating and the arguing, uh, the fighting. There's a good fight and there's a fight that it's between God and them. Okay, that's why I'm saying let them alone. Give, let God take care of them. Turn to 2 Corinthians 12.20. 2 Corinthians 12.20. When you don't let them alone, you start becoming, like, acting like the lost world, looking like the lost world, talking like the lost world when you don't let them alone. 2 Corinthians 12, 20. For I fear, lest when I come I shall not find you such as I would, and that I shall be found unto you such as ye would not, lest there be debates, envyings, okay? debates, you look at definite debate, it's arguing. That's what debating is. You're just arguing. We're not supposed to argue among the brethren. We're not to debate, debate among the brethren. You're definitely not supposed to do it among the lost world. Okay? They're going to try to drag you into debates. You've got to get to a point where you just say, here's the, God, here's the plan of salvation. Err on the side of caution. Check whether you be in the faith. And I'm done with you. And you're done. You give them to the Lord. And beings. Okay, brothers and sisters Christ, the biggest thing that we keep pointing out is I, t I talked with uh, Robert Breaker in the comment section years ago. He was teaching a false plan of salvation, so I got to the point where he's not listening, he doesn't care about the Word of God, and then you've learned, I've learned so much more about 
what he does teach after the fact, but at the time it was just about the plan of salvation. I'm like, you're not teaching the plan of salvation found in the King James Bible. And I link scripture after scripture after scripture. He rejects the Jesus Christ of the King James Bible, even though he pretends to believe in it, but he rejects it with his actions, his deeds, and a lot of his words. Once you back him in the corner, he starts showing that he doesn't believe in the Jesus Christ of the Bible. But it got to the point where I just linked the gospel message and I moved on. I haven't mentioned, I haven't watched any of his videos in, in years and years and years and years. I never watched his videos to begin with, but I went over there to see if it was true, so what some people were saying, because it's always best to investigate and research, you know. And I haven't, you know, taught, me messaged on his channel or nothing. Uh, I could go uh, Edward P.F. I talked with him and messaging under his videos and stuff like that. Uh, either that or it's under one of my videos, but um, older, older ones. But I talked to him, same situation. It got to the point where I just had to give him the gospel message, the true plan of salvation found in the King James Bible, and move on. I haven't mess watched his videos. I never watched his videos to begin with. Um, it's just he came over and started attacking Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries, and I can't remember if he mentioned any of mine, but the point is, is I gave, I linked the plan of salvation to him, even linked scriptures, not just the gospel message, but I linked scriptures to him and actually like had a conversation back and forth. He wants nothing to do with the Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. He doesn't want anything to do with the true plan of salvation. So what happened? I'm done with him. I haven't mentioned, this is the first time I've mentioned him in a while, and you just have nothing to do with them. I'm, using, I'm doing a Bible study and using them as an example. Right? And I could keep going. King's Table. I had to kick King's Table, like block him from my channel because I got to the point where I linked the plan of salvation to him. I said, okay, I'm done. I need you to stop. I wasn't going to block him. I just said, I'm done. Evidently, you're not going to see my, what I'm saying. And I've proved through Scripture you're wrong, but let's say it for the... Our, uh, argument I'm not seeing what he wants and he's not seeing what I want he goes his way and I st and since he was coming to my channel I stay and continue teaching what I'm teaching and he can go teach what he wants to teach but he didn't he kept coming to my channel non-stop non-stop what's that called envying I don't know why he would envy me that he would bother me so much so I had to block him from my channel but I don't go over to his channel and I don't make comments left and right and I don't watch his videos I don't support him and I could keep going down through them all. Max Bauer. There's a lot of people. Deborah Gill comes on, and I, I've got I I think probably a month ago or something like that. I got drawn into where I did get into a little bit more of a debate with her again. But I just got to keep remembering. Preach the plan of salvation, and I'm done. And give her to the Lord, so the Lord can deal with her. The Lord can't deal with her if I'm still in her face. Hey, here's the plan of salvation. God will deal with you. Okay. I don't. Like I said, I'm using, I'm totally talking about her as an example. But you see all these enemies, brothers and sisters in Christ, they keep making videos left and right, and they're not doing Bible studies, they're just making videos left and right. Uh, they keep coming over, and they, these people are coming over making comments under my videos sometimes, under Brother Brian's videos, Brother JT's videos, uh, and some of the other brethren's videos. Okay, What's going on there? Envyings. Don't let them draw you into that. When you start going to their, because there's some people that are, that I believe are saved, but some might be fakes. But there's Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women that are going to their channel thinking they're putting up the good fight for the... We're fighting for the brethren and everything and fighting for the Lord. And they're going over there and they're doing the same thing to the enemy that the enemy does to us. We're supposed to be separate than they are. Okay? What, you, what are you doing? You're starting to envy them. They're getting all this attention. Well, you're helping with that every time you mention their name, which is why I don't like to talk about them too much. Okay? When you make videos against them, uh, you give them recognition. So be careful with that. Okay? Wraths. Next part is strifes. They want to cause strife, and I've seen it happen. Okay? Brethren turn against brethren because they're not going off what the book says. Someone comes along with good words and fair speeches, and they deceive the hearts of the simple. The thing is, brother and sister in Christ, you're not supposed to be simple. The hummingbirds are fighting over the hummingbird feeder. You're not supposed to be simple. That's why the Bible says, 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You're to study this book so you're not simple. Someone can't come along with good words and fair speeches and just deceive you. 
okay? If you're not, you know, that's why I teach dispensation. You gotta be dispensational. You gotta be a King James Bible believer. You have to believe in absolute truth. Today, it comes to you, the King James Bible, for English speaking people. But they like to go after some of the young, like the newly saved. Oh, that breeze is coming up pretty cold. Go after the newly saved, and they cause strife, division. All right. Watch out for that. Backbiting, because we're going to go through some of these words and look at the, what the Bible says a little bit. But backbiting that we talked about, whisperings, gossip. Even if it's true, gossip. You know, If a brother came to me and confessed a fault and he repented and he got back on his feet, doing right by the Lord, doing right by the Lord, uh, you don't go around telling everybody about it behind that person's back. That's whisperings. But oftentimes the whisperings is just gossip, it's lies. They're probably on lies and hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Swellings, we'll talk about that. Tumults. Unless when I come again, my God will humble me among you. You know, Paul's like, I come there, I could lose my temper, I could get angry. I pray the Lord humbles me so I can talk to you guys and get through to you guys. When you get angry, you tend to say things that you don't want to say, that you didn't mean to say. Mm -hmm. Humble me among you, and that I shall be well many which have sinned already, and have not repented of the uncleanness. This is all uncleanness. And fornication, which was going on in the Corinthians. And lasciviousness, which they have committed. Turn to Romans one twenty-eight. What we're going to do now is contrast these that let you know that all this stuff that we saw here, that he saw going on, is what lost people do. We're supposed to be set apart from the lost world. We're not supposed to be getting into debates, envyings, wrath, strife, back by whispering, swellings, tumults. Why is that? Because it's a sign of somebody who's lost. When you look at somebody, oh, you used to debate and argue all the time, but now you don't anymore. What's up with that? Well, Jesus saved me. I came to him broken in repentance, change of heart, sorrow for my personal sins I've sinned against him, believed in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, confessed both in prayer, asked God to save me, and he changed me. There's supposed to be a change. Okay. Romans 1.28 And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Let's talk about lost people. 29 being filled with all unrighteousness. Jesus' righteousness is imputed to me. They're filled with all unrighteousness. There's no righteousness in them at all. So this is talking about lost people. Fornication. Wickedness. Covetousness. Maliciousness. I can't even say that word today for some reason. Full of envy. There we see the word envy. Murder, debate, there's the word debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. I want to stop there for a second. All these things you see going on, the envying, the debating, the whispering that goes on with these false converts and they're attacking true Bible-believing, God-fearing ministries, what's really going on is they're haters of God. Okay. I don't hate uh, Robert Breaker. I do not hate Edward P.F. I don't hate King's Table. I don't hate uh, Deborah Gill. Okay. And for some of you who follow this ministry, I don't hate my ex-wife. I mean, she made some videos, said a lot of lies to, about me. They got she took them down, but I, I don't know what's going on. But the thing is, is I don't hate those people. Okay? I love the Lord, and I love them by preaching the truth to them. And I did, every single one of them, I preached truth to them. They didn't want it. I gave them to the Lord. Okay? What's going on? When they come and they keep attacking us and attacking us and attacking us, and what's going on? All this backbiting, this whispering, this envying, murder, debate, it's because they're haters of God. Their true hate that they show towards you, it's not really towards you, it's towards God. We preach the true plan of salvation, we preach the real Jesus Christ to the King James Bible, and they hate Him. And they're despiteful, and they're proud, 
And they're boasters. They love to boast. Okay? Inventors of evil things. Disobedient to parents. Without understanding. Oh, yeah. Covet covenant breakers. Without natural affection. Implicable. Unmerciful. Who knowing the judgment of God. Like I said, this is talking about lost people, but also when you read that last part, 32, who knowing the judgment of God, there are people who know the truth. The truth has been brought to them. This isn't people that are ignorant. I've never heard about Jesus Christ, the Bible version issue, dispensational teaching, so on and so forth. This is people who, knowing the judgment of God, they which commit such thing are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. This whole thing we read right there is evidence of somebody who's lost. Okay, these are signs of a lost person. So as a saved, Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman out there, brothers and sisters of Christ, you go back to 2 Corinthians 12, 20, they're looking and acting lost. You guys are acting like you're lost. You're acting like the lost world. And Paul's having to correct him. You're not supposed to be doing this. The debating needs to stop. The envying needs to stop. The wrath, the strife, the backbiting, the whisperings, the swellings, the tumults, it all needs to stop. But what's going on there? You have lost people coming in and getting the saved to do it. What do we have today on YouTube? You get all these lost people coming up to you trying to drag you into it, so you start looking like them, acting like them, and talking like them. When you let them alone, you let them alone. You have nothing to do with them. Lord, you take care of it. I give them to you, Lord. Please take care of them. And you're done. Okay, backbiting. Okay, The Webster's 1828 Dictionary for backbiting is one who slanders, culminates, or speaks ill of the absent. There's people that talk backbiting back and forth. In other words, you're not talking to the person's face. Even if you make a video about it, you're still not talking to the person's face. But they slanders, it's lies, speaking lies, and speaking ill. What did we just read up there about uh, Proverbs 24? You're not supposed to be, your heart's not supposed to be glad when the enemy stumbleth, when the enemy falleth, when bad things are happening to anything. You're not supposed to be excited and happy and proud and, and boasting about it. Okay. Why? Because God will turn his wrath from them. But you have backbiting. Proverbs 25, 23 says, The north wind driveth away rain. What does that mean? Out here, we were desperately needing some rain this summer. And all these dark clouds that looked like they were rain clouds started coming up. And we have a big ravine, and we have the Chetco River over here, and it's called the Chetco Effect. And you have a lot of heat that's coming in from the in inland, because we're on the ocean, coming in from the inland. And what it did was, is as that rain started coming to us, and we were like, yes, we're going to get some rain. It blew the rain clear out to sea. We didn't get one drop. Okay, that's what it's talking about. There, the north wind driveth away rain. That's the example. So doth an angry countenance, a backbiting tongue. Brothers and sisters of Christ, when you start falling into the trap of slander, speaking ill of someone, getting negative. I've had it done. I've done it. Is what I'm saying. I've gotten negative, and you start speaking ill. I've no, I'm not slandering as far as making up lies about people, but I have spoken ill of people that aren't here face to face okay and when you start falling into that trap just remember you look up and just picture God looking down at you and he's angry at you son daughter you're not supposed to be doing that and that gets that backbiting tongue right out of the way I'm done Lord I'm sorry Lord please forgive me I'm sorry I'm done I just wanted to do that as a picture to help you brother sister Christ God looks down at you and he's angry you have all these false converts out there that are backbiting left and right, and you tell them this, and they'll be like, whatever. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Whatever. They don't care. Why? Because they're haters of God. But brother and sister in Christ, you love Jesus Christ, who is God fully and completely. God the Father. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. There's but one God, the Father. Okay. Not three gods. One God. Okay. Imagine Jesus looking down at you, and he's just so disappointed and angry with you because of the backbiting. You can even picture that with all this stuff. When you fall into the envying, the debate, the whisperings, the backbiting. When you, if you, you know, when a son or daughter looks in her dad's eyes and realizes he's mad and she's in trouble, oh boy, I better straighten up. 
You ever had that thing where the dad just looked at the kid and says, straighten up, and the kid's like, yes, sir. Just by that look, the anger that's in him, okay, the angry countenance, just the way he looks, because he's angry, the son, father's just pleased with how the children are behaving. Oh, yeah. I went ahead and threw in murdering, murder here because people say murder. I don't kill nobody. 1 John 3.15, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murder hath eternal life abiding in him. Right. Now understand, I understand it says brother, but I want to bring this to your attention that they try to come in and they try to get you to do all these things that we mentioned to get us to turn on each other. Now you look at them, brother, sister, Christ, they turn on each other left and right all the time. Okay. They hate their brothers who's part of their group. They're just turning on each other all the time and they're just fighting like rabid dogs. That's not how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be set apart. We're supposed to be different. I've seen brethren break fellowship with each other. Okay. And ultimately, it was because of all this backbiting and this uh, lies that we talk about bickering as one who slanders, calmly speaks evil of the absent, people who are promoting lies and hypocrisy and trying to get the brethren to turn on each other. Okay, we're supposed to be different than the lost world. You're not to hate your brother, because to hate your brother, it's murder. Whisperers. Okay. Whisperer, a, t a tattler. <laughs> one who tells secrets, you know. You have a brother in Christ come to you and say, hey, here's... I'm going to tell you something that I told the Lord and now I'm telling you and it's just, you know, something between you and me. The next thing you know, you got someone coming out and doing emails and doing videos and stuff. You know? My first advice is, Brother Sister Christ, always watch what you say, even in private. Okay? Don't say anything in private that you wouldn't want to be seen to a, for, as a, to a point in public. Okay? Be careful what you say in private. Okay? But this is someone who's the whisperer. They like to tell secrets. Um, a covenant of intellect, intellect, intelligent, I'm sorry, intelligent secretly. Okay, a conveyor of intelligence secretly. Okay? That's talking about like, you know, if you're a spy or something, but that's one definition. But another one's one who slanders secretly. Slanders secretly. So it might not even be a truth. It might be just a flat out lie. But they start whispering about it, and it starts going around. The lie goes around. Next thing you know, you got people believing it, thinking it's true. They never once say, "Okay, I'm going to go to the source and find out what's really going on." But that's what whispering does, okay? And when people whisper, they try to get you to whisper. And the more you try to deal with them on your own and by yourself, instead of just saying, "Okay, at this point, I'm going to give them to you, Lord," and you back off, God will deal with them. They can whisper all they want. God will deal with them. Okay. Psalms 41, 7. All that hate me whisper together against me. That's another thing. When you have people that whisper against you, it's because you, they hate you. Now, if you're whispering as a brother and sister in Christ against them, you're hating them. And are you supposed to hate them? Are you supposed to hate your enemies? No. When you have a whispering, that's a sign of hate. Okay. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. They want to see you fall and they want to see you be hurt. That's the whole point of these people going around and saying lies and hypocrisy and you know, whispering all these lies, starting rumors. Okay? They hate you and they want you to be hurt. They want to see you be hurt and get hurt. Proverbs 16.28 A froward man soweth strife and a whisperer Separate chief friends. That's what whispering is about. It's to divide the brethren. There's, I've heard all kinds of stuff before about me, but mainly about like Brother Brian and stuff like that. And I'm like, I've been watching Brother Brian for five years since I've been saved. It was six years actually. But five years when I finally decided, you know what, I need to make a decision. Am I just trying to play religion or am I truly trying to seek the Lord? And I had to give, come to the Lord broken and give my life to Him. Okay. But I've been watching him and some of the gossip that goes around and some of the lies. Oh, he teaches this or he teaches that or he does that. Or... You'd be shocked. But what's it to do? It's trying to divide the chiefest of friends. 
It's trying to divide the brethren and turn us against each other. That's what the lost world does. They turn against each other. Okay? That's not what we're supposed to do. And I've seen so many brethren fall away. A lot of false converts, more false converts come to light. But I've seen brethren fall away from the brethren. Brethren fighting brethren. Why? Because of whisperings. Now, I've done studies, real quick, I have done studies that show there is justification um, to break fellowship. Sin is justification to break fellowship. If someone's in sin, they refuse to repent, they love that sin, they're not giving it up, you're to break fellowship. And when you break fellowship, what are you doing? You're giving them to God. Letting them alone until they repent. Then you can invite them back in and get that sin out of their life. Not just in word, but in deed. But until then, you're letting them alone. Okay, you're breaking fellowship. And then God will deal with them. There's that too. But a lot of times I see whisperings break people up. Well, I can't, I can't follow this brother in Christ in ministry because he does this and this. And he teaches. And I'm like, he doesn't do that. And he doesn't teach that. Who told you that? Well, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, that's the whole point. Brother and sister Christ, when it comes to whispering, you know how you solve that? You go straight to the source and you ask that person. Straight to the source. Okay. When I went straight to people like Edward P.F. and Robert Breaker, people kept saying this is what they're doing. And it could be considered whispering, but they're just stating a fact, doing Bible studies, refuting what they were teaching. I'm like, are they really teaching this? So I went over there and I actually talked to him. I went straight to the source and said, you really don't believe that there's that repentance is godly sorrow for sinning against him, coming to God broken. You really don't believe prayer is part of the plan of finding God's grace, the plan of salvation. I always say the plan of salvation because there's a plan. Okay, there's a road map that God says, follow these steps and you can find my grace. My grace is there for anybody to find. It's not hard if you want it. But a lot of people don't want it. But there's steps. It's not works, it's just there's steps you've got to follow. Repentance, belief, confess both in prayer, and you've got to ask God to save you. I had to go and talk to him. I went to the source. He's like, yeah, there's, prayer's not part of salvation. He totally screws up repentance, and it's just head belief. I, I, I was like, wow, I guess it's true. You want to squash out whisperings? When you hear people whispering, go to the source. Okay? Talk to the person. Find out the truth. Have, you know, be your own self instead of being a zombie. Oh, they said it because it has to be true because so-and-so said it, and I'm just going to keep repeating what they're saying. Okay, brother, says Christ? Be, be careful. Next one is swellings. Swellings is a rising or enlargement by passion. Your passion rises as the swelling of anger, grief, or pride. Okay, 2 Peter 2, 18. He's talking about swellings. There's going to be a lot of pride going on, I believe, what Paul was talking about. But people were getting angry with each other without a cause. Because of the whisperings. You said this about me, blah, blah. Like, and the other guy's like, but I didn't say anything about you. And then they turn around and say something bad about him. Then they get mad at him. Then they get mad at him. And they're getting, just, it just swells, the swellings. People are getting angry at each other. Okay? The grief that it caused. Remember what we talked about? Backbite, they want to hurt you. They want to make you look bad, and they want to hurt you. They hate you, and they want to hurt you. Those are the two things. And it's a lot of grief going about. 2 Peter 2.18 For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, vanity means fake, they allure through the lusts of the flesh through much wantonness, the weak were clean, escape from them who live in error. Okay. What's going on with swellings? Okay, you've got people that are going around talking bad and everything, and they're using swelling words of vanity. They're fake, but it's going to cause swellings because they're trying to cause anger. Okay, and that anger can hurt people and cause grief. The other way of looking at this for swelling words of vanity is when you get very prideful, you can start getting, start doing swelling words of vanity. I've seen that a lot too. They allure through the lust of the flesh. The reason people put up with people that are screaming at you on the, screaming at you on the, you know, the TV or the monitor or whatever, or in these Babel buildings, they're just screaming, 
or they're very prideful and everything because it's what they say it allures to the lust of the flesh. They're telling people what they want to hear. So through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. So I just want to use that as an example. Swellings. They're going to get swellings to go on. People will start getting swelled up. And I've seen this with people making comments lately. Some of the brethren, it's like, it's kind of swelled up. Instead of just talking with grace and with peace, if it be possible, live peacefully among all men. You don't just come out trying to be a, uh, I don't know how else to say it. You don't, try not to come across as a jerk. Okay. They might think you're being a jerk. Like when I just linked the gospel message, oh, he's a jerk. He wouldn't keep talking to me. But when I started talking with them, I'm not saying I was being a jerk. That's not me being a jerk. That's love. But I tried talking to them peacefully. They didn't want the truth. So I, play, I linked the gospel message, and they think I'm being a jerk. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people coming back with, you know, being prideful, swellings, very prideful, very angry. Okay? Or you got the people to greet, the poor me, the poor me, you know, putting on a pity party show. You've got those kind of people. Then be very careful. Next one is tumult. When someone's, you know, give those people to God. When you start doing this and start making this mistake, look up and just picture God looking at you angry like a father. Because he is your father. Looking at you like you're ang he's angry with you as a, a child. Okay, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm going to stop the swellings. Okay, I'm going to stop, you know, the, the screaming and yelling into the camera. I'm going to stop the pride. I'm going to stop the pity party. Okay. Now, a lot of these false converts out there that we call them out on their false teachings and everything, and they show all of that. Yeah. Tumult. Tumult is the biggest thing that they like. They like it because with the tumult, it says the commotion, disturbance, or agitation of a multitude. They like to put, make a big uh, scene. You know, I've heard someone come in, they like to scream, and they like to put on a show and make a big scene. That's what tumult is. Okay? Usually accompanied with great noise, uproar, or confusion of voices. Okay? Street preaching today. A lot of the street preaching today, it's tumults. They get out there and they start just yelling at everybody. And then those people are, I've seen videos where those people, the lost world, and I believe they're both lost. I really do. But they're just yelling at each other. And they make a big scene and everybody around is watching it. They like to be seen and put on a big scene at the same time. <laughs> Using those words. And we got street preachers today. They got the Babel buildings. You know, they get into the Babel buildings and make a big scene. A lot of those people up there yelling, uh, the charismatics. Everybody's speaking in tongues. Everybody's just yelling, dancing around the aisles and everything. What is it? That's a tumult. Okay. But also on YouTube, you have a lot of the enemies will gang up. They're against each other, but they'll all gang up together to go after a true Bible-believing, God-fearing man. And when they think they've squashed that man, they go back to fighting amongst themselves. Seen it. Okay. Psalm 74, 23. It says, Forget not the voice of thine enemies. Okay. The tumult of those that rise up against thee increaseth continually. Okay. For, for, with, I want you to get from this, brother, sister, Christ, is to understand that those people are always going to be there. Those people are always going to be trying to put on a big show. They want attention. They're going to say all kinds of things, that, all these other things we talked about, the swellings, the backbiting, the whisperings, and they're going to try to make a tumult in the comment section. They want tons of people in there just fighting and, and everything, and it's just like having a big scene. They want that. Okay? Your the enemies says, forget out the voice of thy enemies. Okay? When someone comes to me, when I was newly saved, the enemy would say, this is truth, that's truth, this is truth. And I was just learning. So I just studied the Word of God. I followed true Bible-believing ministries. And now I'm getting to the point where when the enemy comes around, I didn't forget those voices. Hey, didn't you teach such and such? That's not what the Bible teaches. And I try to show them truth. It doesn't know. Oh, it's, it's, actually, it's never worked out with those guys. You know. I haven't come across one person that says, yeah, you know what, I did teach that, but I was wrong. Everybody that I was just like ignored him in the past and said, okay, I don't know if that's true or not, because I'd have to do a Bible study on it. When I've done the Bible study and I get back to them, they're still teaching the falsehood, the error. Okay. 
and the tumult of those who rise up against thee increaseth continually. And the biggest way to make it increase continually is if you go along with it. You're a part of it. That'll definitely get it to increase greatly. But it's always going to be out there. There's people always going to be attacking you, brothers and sisters in Christ, whether you're in ministry, just serving the Lord, or you're standing up for the Word of God in the comment sections under Bible-believing, God-fearing ministries. You're going to have people that are just fighting and wants to start tumults. Okay. Psalms 83.2 says, For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. There it is again. When people are starting tumults, it's because they hate you. Brother and sister Christ, are we supposed to be doing that? We're not supposed to have hate for the lost world. We're not supposed to have hate for our brother or sister in Christ. Okay? We preach truth. They don't want truth. We leave the gospel message, and you move on. Give them to God. I've given brethren to God. Saying, Lord, I tried preaching them the truth in this area of their life. They're wrong. 100% wrong. They won't repent. I've given them to God and said, Lord, they're yours. I don't keep bringing up where they're wrong left and right. I've given it to God. 2 Corinthians 6, 4. Did Paul have to put up with it? With tumults? People putting on a big show. Uh, riots. You know, you got crowds that are angry and everything. Today our crowds online, are, we have these crowds of people that hate you and are angry with you. 2 Corinthians 6, 4. But in all things approve ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, that's proof, in afflictions, in necessities, in distress, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in, wa in watchings, in fastings, and I'll stop there because it keeps going on, but the okay, word we're looking for is tumults. Paul is saying, we're preaching truth, and it was getting people angry. Groups of people were attacking us. Paul was stoned once, <laughs> you know. That's how bad it was, you know. He, they tried to do it again a second time, you know. And just read about it. It's there. It's evidence that you're saved when you've got when you're preaching truth and you have a huge group of people that's upset at you and they try to rile each other up to go after you, and that's all these people are doing, you know. This group. Edward P. We call him the Edward P. F. Group because he's the one that was the big one that I watched that was doing it. He was just attacking people, anybody and everybody. First he's for Brother Brian, then he's against him, then he's against Robert Breaker, then he's for Robert Breaker, then he's against Robert, and he's just fighting anybody and everybody, you know, just cuckoo. But there's a whole group of them over there that do the same thing he does now. Okay, and what do they do? They go back. It's the same group of people. I mean, you go over there. I don't, I don't promote going over there, but. If you've never been over there, you know, don't just take my word for it. It's the same group of people talking and chatting in the comment section. And they're just going back and forth and saying bad things about anybody and everybody. And they're just riling themselves up. And then they make videos so they rile themselves up going after people. Right. you got to be careful. The two reasons that you let them alone is A, so God can deal with them. And B, so you don't become like them. Those are signs of someone who's lost. All the things we talked about. There's things that lost people do. There's things that maybe newly saved people are doing. And God is still cleaning up your life. I understand that. But it doesn't change the fact that when you get saved, God's going to change that stuff and get that stuff out of your life. You're supposed to be a light for Jesus Christ to the world. They're supposed to see Jesus in you. There's supposed to be a difference. And when you start falling back into it, you're starting to fall back into the old man, and you're starting to look like the lost, act like the lost, and talk like the lost. So why do you let them alone? Because you don't want to let them drag you down to where they are. They're still the old man. They've never had the new birth. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you and I have. We're not supposed to be let, let them drag us back down to their level. Okay? That's another. That's the second main reason you let them alone. And I want to end this with an example from the Bible. All right. Turn to Exodus 21, 23. Be careful when we pray, when I pray for the enemies and everything, I pray that God opens their eyes. That God gives them every opportunity to get saved. To see the error of their ways. Okay, but they need to get saved first. And I just pray, Lord, save them. Give me every opportunity to get saved. Uh, we pray sometimes that the Lord 
uh, distracts them from going after true Bible believing, God fearing ministries and men and women. You know, please distract them. But persecution is part of suffering for Jesus Christ. You're going to get people that attack you. But I want to go through Exodus 21 23. Are we supposed to wish that God just destroys them, kills them? Whatever, what, what's going on to me needs to happen to them. It's only fair. Exodus 21 23. And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. What they're doing to me, do to them, Lord. Well, it's just what it says in the Old Testament. You turn to Leviticus 24.19. Turn to Leviticus 24.19. And if a man cause a blemish in his neighbor... As he hath done, so do, so shall it be done to him. 20. Breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he hath caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done to him again. Hmm. See, the Bible says, eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. He does it to me, I can do it to him. And you can pray, Lord, destroy him, kill him, get him out of the way. Turn to Matthew 5.38. What does Jesus have to say about this? Don't get me wrong, that's the Old Testament. That was there. The body was connected to the soul. Okay? It was works back in the Old Testament. Um, as I'm learning that it's, it's works and faith. Okay, to a point, there's faith in play a little bit here, there, or there's a lot of faith and a little bit of works play here. It's a little bit of both. Okay? Um, but that's a whole other study that I'm learning. Because uh, a lot of people say sometimes it was just faith in this dispensation and it's works in this dispensation. you got to actually look into it a little bit more. Okay, This, I believe, after just going on a side note, I believe that this dispensation, the church age, is the only time it's been faith through faith. And only faith. Okay, It's God's grace is what saves in every dispensation. But how do you find God's grace in this dispensation? It's through faith. It's the only dispensation that works haven't been involved at all. It's just through faith. Not faith alone, but you find God's grace through faith. That's a whole other study. But we see here, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But what does Jesus say when he talks to him? Matthew 5, 38. Clouds are kind of blocking the sun, so I hope you can still see me. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, give him thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, and persecute you. And persecute you. That's the key right there. Pray for them that despitefully use you, and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh this sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Turn to Acts 7, 57. So we see there, some people say, well that's, you know, for the Jewish people, or that's just for brothers and sisters in Christ, or that's just for the, I don't know if someone will use this passage for the Millennial Kingdom, but I've heard some people use different passages. You know, they'll say it's that, it's that. Destruction righteousness here is, you're not supposed to hate your enemy, and you're not supposed to wish evil, like recompense evil with evil. We're going to read about this. Acts 7.51. You have Stephen. He's preaching to him about Moses, because they, they were doing lies and hypocrisy, saying he was, he was teaching against Moses and the law and everything. He goes through and preaches the law. He preaches Moses. He preaches Jesus Christ. Right. And then we'll look at the reaction. Acts 7, 57. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out 
of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid their, down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Remember that. And they stoned Stephen, and this is Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He died. So the way he's saying died. Okay. When I say remember Saul, he's saying lay not this to their charge. They're killing him. They're stoning him. Well, if it's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, then God kill all those people. Who was among those people? Saul was. Who's Saul? He later becomes Paul, the apostle Paul. Okay. Lay this not to their charge. Okay, don't represent evil with evil. I don't wish evil on my enemies. I give them to the Lord and let the Lord deal with them. And if his wrath wants to come down on them, that's between him. God knew about Paul. Okay, you're looking at a man who is killing, he's a Pharisee, he, he's, a, he's a false, not really, I, he's a, I did a study about him being a false convert, but I was about to say a wolf in sheep's clothing. He was a Pharisee, he's saying, I'm a man of God, and I'm doing God's work and God's service, and he's going around killing Christians. And people were following him. There was a group of people there, there was people that were following him. Paul's, uh, uh, not Paul, but Saul, before he became Paul, Saul, if you look at Saul before he became Paul, he's no different than um, Edward P.F., Stephen Anderson, Robert Breaker. I mean, they're not killing people, but they're leading people to hell. But a lot of these wicked, wicked people out there that's just against Bible-believing Christians and persecuting us and hating us and doing anything they possibly can. What happens if one of them gets saved? Could you imagine that? The 180? The changed life? The sorrow that Saul had in his heart for how he killed Stephen, how he killed the Christians, when he got saved, he is now a brother and sister, like brothers and sisters in Christ. He's a brother in Christ. He stops to think before he got saved. I'm talking about present tense, he's saved. He's looking back saying, I was killing my brothers and sisters in Christ. How's that for motivation to do the work of the Lord? But the whole point is, is you have no clue what the future holds. Stephen's like, Lord, don't kill these people. You could. You could just strike them dead right here and there. Lord, don't do it. Why? Because if you strike them right here and there, what would happen to Saul? God just killed them all. They'd all been in hell. And then tossed in the lake of fire to burn for all eternity. But Stephen's like, don't lay this to their charge. And later down the road, one of them got saved. Saul, who later, who later became Paul. All these people, all these enemies, pray for them. Pray that God gives them every opportunity to get saved. Make sure you have a shield. That shield of faith we'll be getting to. Okay? You're supposed to be fighting the good fight, standing for the Word of God. Absolutely. But brothers and sisters in Christ, when you go to let them alone, you, it doesn't mean that you don't stop preaching. The, you just have to stop preaching the Word because you're letting them alone. You continue to preach the Word. But you let them alone and you let God deal with them on a personal level. Don't fall into the trap of everything that we just read there, the whispering, the backbiting, the tumults, the swellings, the debating, the arguing, the whisperings, the rumors, passing on rumors and whatnot. Okay? I said that for Stephen because I read that and God just brought it to my attention and said, you do realize that what Stephen's really saying, you know, not to, it's not supposed to be an eye for an eye. Now, Someone could have taught him that because Jesus said it or because of the Holy Spirit in him and the, net, and the changed life. He's not that way anymore. It's not an eye for an eye anymore. Tooth for a tooth. He's like, don't kill these people. I believe in Stephen's heart. He's like, Lord, if you strike these people down dead, I know exactly where they're going. If uh, God was to strike down Steve Anderson, Edward P.F., Robert Breaker, Max Bauer, King's Table, all these people that are causing trouble, I can't think of all of them. Um, I know where they would go. They're going to go to hell and die and burn for all eternity. Toss in the lake of fire and burn for all eternity. Lord, give them every opportunity. You can't give them every opportunity if they're dead. 
Okay, I don't pray for their, their de death. Okay, you're not supposed to do that. That's why Stephen's like, lay this not to their charge. Okay? If it ever gets to the point where I'm getting killed by people, Lord, lay this not to their charge. Okay? Why? Because I want to see people get saved. If so much as one person gets saved, it's worth my death. If my death can lead one person to Christ, it's worth it. That's what I believe Stephen was thinking. It's worth it, Lord. If one of these people might get saved later, it's worth my death. I just preached the plan of salvation. I preached Jesus Christ to them. If later on there's conviction and one of these people gets saved, it's worth it. Okay. Now Stephen didn't raise, I know you can't do this, but raise from the dead start getting in their face. You need to get saved. You need to get saved. He preached the plan of salvation and he died. He was killed by them. He went to, the, he went to uh, heaven and now God deals with them. And did God deal with Saul? Oh, yes, he did. Okay? Let them alone, brothers and sisters in Christ. If you don't let, let them alone means you let them alone. You have nothing to do with them. Okay, I'm done with you. You stop talking about them. You stop making videos about them. You stop going over to their channels and making comments under their channels. Okay? You stop fighting with them and arguing with them under uh, brethren's channels. Okay? I understand the whole point of uh, deleting comments. Um, blocking people. I always thought, man, I probably should, I, I won't have to block anybody. I mean, nobody's going to be treat me the way they treat Brother Brian, uh, you know, because I'm just starting, you know. I was like, uh, no, I've had to block some people because they just can't take, let them alone. Okay, they can't handle that. Everything we talked about, the envying, they come over and they keep trying to start trouble. It's like, from such, the Bible talks about it, that he's a hypocrite, and you teach him false doctrines, from such withdraw thyself. Okay? Well, no, not with one, no, not eat. You know, have nothing to do with them. But they keep coming over trying to have something to do with us. I've had to block people. Let them alone so God can deal with them. And if you're not letting them alone, you're not letting God alone. You're not letting God deal with it. You're trying to deal with it. Let God deal with it. Okay? And two, don't be like them. Don't fall in the trap of being like them, being hateful. That's all it is. It's about hate and anger. Okay? That's all it's about. They hate the Word of God. They hate the real Jesus Christ. And when you get saved and become part of the body of Christ, you get hated by association. Okay? Don't fall into that trap. Don't fall into the hate. Don't be like trying to talk bad. I hope this happens to them or that happens to them. I hope they get saved. Oh, I pray the Lord gives them every opportunity to get saved. And I can say this a million times, but I just really want to drive this home, brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'm going on and on and on. But Brothers, we need to get back to fellowship, true fellowship. We need to get back to preaching the Word of God. I already mentioned this in one of my other videos, that we need to get back to actually preaching the Word of God. I'm talking about brothers and sisters in Christ, not preaching it, but brothers and sisters in Christ, when you go to talk about the Word of God and say, the Word of God says this, we're getting lazy and we're not actually quoting the Scriptures. We're not even linking the scriptures, okay? We need to get back to when we say, thus saith the Lord, it needs to be in scripture. Because I've caught a couple of people that have parroted, it's, the Bible says this, and I'm like, chapter and verse, and they couldn't show me. And they had to stop and think and go, wait a second, well then where did I hear that from? Because we're not focusing on this. We got the masks thing coming out, the pandemic, the world's going downhill because the Bible says it's going downhill. Catch away the body of Christ could happen tomorrow, could happen today, you know. Don't let it distract you from this. Don't let it distract you from living a life of Christ. Right? So grace and peace from God our Father and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Please, please heed this warning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'll talk to you and see you in the next video.